Let's look at the evolution of sound systems and the differences between consumer and professional audio. All right, so let's start with a music source. And out of that music source, we're gonna run into an amp. And out of that amp, we're gonna run into a full range speaker. That could be a single speaker, it could be multi speakers. It could be a woofer, a tweeter, woofer, mid range, and tweeter, or whatever, a bunch of speakers in there. If it's more than one speaker, it's a little more complex. It's not just going into the speaker, we're actually dealing with the woofer and tweeter separately. And there will be inside of that speaker box some sort of filtering, maybe a capacitor, maybe capacitors and chokes, some sort of passive crossover that sends the high frequencies to the tweeter and the low frequencies to the woofer. But if we want to get this louder, and over time the desire to get this louder became necessary for other applications in low to mid volume environments. So this crossover was a weak point because we're driving a lot of power into these components. So instead of taking and putting the crossover inside of the speaker cabinet, let's put the crossover before the amplifiers and use two separate amplifiers. This is what we call bi-amplified. By amplification is where we divide the frequencies up before the power stage. So the high frequencies go to the high frequency amp, the low frequencies go to the low frequency amp. This gives us more control. This stops the problem of distortion having high frequencies that are all pumped into the tweeter. If the woofer distorts, the tweeter will still be clean. And we can use a smaller amp on the tweeter and a bigger amp on the woofer and have things more efficiently powered. It costs a little more money to do this. This works fine, but it's not the end of the line. We need more volume and a lot of home hi-fi stuff and many pro sound applications. We also want a subwoofer. So for that subwoofer to be powered, we're gonna put an amp on it. But now we gotta get signal to that amp. So in order to do that, we need to divide up these frequencies. So let's go ahead and take this music and we'll send the music to the full range speaker, but we also want to send it to the subwoofer. But if we send it all to the subwoofer, it's going to put out all these high frequencies. They're going to fight with each other. We don't want that. We only want the lows. So in order to do that, we're going to put in a high pass and a low pass filter. A low pass filter is going to stop the high frequencies from getting to the subwoofer. The high pass filter is going to stop frequencies that are super low from getting to the subwoofer. Now a low pass filter, a high pass filter may be here as well because we don't want it going anywhere. That's another place to put it, but typically it'll show up here in addition to that. All right, so now we have this set up, but also we don't want these low frequencies going to the woofer now. We want the woofer to reproduce Above that, we want the subwoofer to dedicate to those frequencies. So to solve that, we would put a high pass filter onto the full range box. So now we have more of a setup that's common for live sound and not that uncommon for home hi-fi that's pushing to the higher levels. But with live stuff, we actually have more control. We don't just have music, we have separate instruments. We might have guitar and vocals and kick and bass, and we'd have a bunch more, but these are the ones I'll use for now. And we would take those and we would mix those together and run those into the full range speaker and the subwoofer system. Very cool, this all works great, except now we want to push things farther. We want to get even better sound and we're finding that the vocal mic has wind noise and handling noise and the guitar has some uh, bass bleeding into the mic and it's putting out rumble from the bass guitar and the kick drum and that's not in time with the mic that's on the bass or kick so that those two signals are fighting each other so we don't want those low notes coming out of the guitar. So what we'll do is we'll then put in a high pass filter and we will start to filter out some of those low frequencies on the guitar and vocals. And so now he, the guitar mainly goes here and some of the guitar low end goes here, but not that much because we've gotten rid of most of it. And the kick and bass goes here 
and it goes here, and everything's fine. We might have an EQ stage in there. We have all kinds of other controls. All right, well, this is a pretty good setup, except this high-pass filter does not get rid of all of that low end. It gets rid of most of it, but not all of it. And if you have a bunch of mics, 20, 30 mics, or even five or 10, all those little bits of low end all add up to rumbly garbage that's showing up into the subwoofer. So there's another way of doing it. Instead of having this filtered out and trying to reduce the amount of guitar and vocals and hi-hat and overhead getting to the subwoofer, what if we eliminate it? So what we can do is we can put in that. So now basically guitar and vocals go to the mains, bass and kick go to the subs, and then we'd need some sort of connection between the two. How about that? Where this triangle will be a summing amp that lets sound go one way and not the other. So now what will happen is the kick and bass will be able to go this way into the full range and this way into the subwoofer and the guitar and vocal or hi-hat and over it goes straight into the mains. Now everything goes where we want it to go and nothing doesn't go where it shouldn't. How easy or hard is this to hook up? Well, if these are subgroups in your console, guitar and vocal, guitar subgroup, vocal subgroup, kick subgroup, bass subgroup. This guitar and vocal subgroup can be assigned to the main PA, to left and right. The kick and bass subgroup would be assigned to left and right. The guitar and bass would not be assigned anywhere else, but the kick and bass would also assign to an auxiliary out that would go to the subwoofer or a stereo aux out. This way, when you bring the guitar up and down, it goes to the main PA. When you bring the vocals up and down, it goes to the main PA. When you bring the kick up and down, it goes to the main PA and the subwoofer. Same thing with bass. If you bring the guitar and vocal subgroups up and down, same thing. It only goes to main PA. You bring the kick and bass subgroups up and down, it goes to the main PA and the subs. If you EQ the guitar and boost low end, it will boost the low end in the main PA but it won't add more guitar to the subwoofer, so you gain another level of control. All right, pretty simple stuff. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how well or not high-pass filters work at reducing the amount of low end going to the subwoofers. It might not be as effective as you think. Cool, cool.